Hey everyone and welcome back to a brand new video. Today I am bringing you guys episode 3 of the Queretaro career mode series and I hope you guys are enjoying it. This is the third episode and without further ado let's start our Liga MX adventure with our first game against Atlas at home. So without further ado let's jump straight into the game. Alright, this is the lineup I'm going to be using, guys. As you can see, Thiago Volpi is going to be in goal. There's our defense. In the midfielders, I'm going to use uh, exactly what I was using in the previous tournament before. And, you know, up top, I decided to go with the likes of Renteria, uh, uh, Pajaro Benitez, and uh, Candelo on the wings. So, yeah, it's it should be... It was actually a very interesting game. It was uh, a game that we knew was going to be a bit tough. Atlas is uh, no easy team whatsoever. And this wasn't a game that we could have considered easy pickings for the both sides. So it was, you know, it, it was a game that we had to take very seriously. Of course, it was our first game at home and we wanted to take all three points in front of our home fans. But we kind of didn't start off on the right foot, as you can see right there. 11th and 12th minute of the match basically and Diago Volpi has to come up big and make a pretty big save and then look at this straight off that the corner falls straight into Jimenez and he's actually unable to put it and he actually does a very good defensive clearance unfortunately it was on the wrong uh, end and then there you guys can see we get an opportunity almost straight away and Gutierrez is unable to finish that he actually just hits it with his shin and another and a great opportunity for us to go up in the match and we actually let it go but then we're gonna move on here 23rd minute of the match it's gonna be um, the likes of George Corral to whip this ball in and it's gonna be the likes of Pajaro Benitez who gets a good head to it connects very strongly with it but it is the, the goalkeeper for Atlas that parries it away and Ustari did very well there but uh, you know we started playing some good fluidity we played some very good balls in you know the back of the defenders and Candelo another opportunity but again it was Ustari that made himself big in his goal and actually I think it was with his feet that he was able to clear this so he, he so far you know the best player on the pitch was actually at last goalkeeper you know we maybe not started right away perfectly the way we wanted to but we definitely did you know uh, cement a rhythm of playing and by doing so we were able to do some pretty good uh, movements around the pitch and there you guys can see another great opportunity that we kind of you know uh, can't really capitalize on it. It's, again, it's another great save from the goalkeeper, but we really should be putting those uh, balls in the back of the net. And then another opportunity right before the half blows. It was uh, it was Renteria who tried to do the cut and spin, but didn't really work out. And then right here, right before the match ends in the first half, look at this opportunity. Diago Volpi just absolutely being no goalkeeper whatsoever. Atlas, what were you thinking? missing from that range absolutely gutted is what they're gonna be like and i think candelo's uh you know face uh really you know sums up how i was feeling throughout the match in the first half a game that we somewhat you know started off quite frantically about it then we actually took control of it otherwise so um we're going to move on here into the second half and straight away Atlas just came to us, you know, they said, you know what, just the way we finished the half is the way we're going to start it. And look at this great opportunity that Thiago Volpi parries away and we're able to clear our lines. And again, luckily, we're not the ones conceding right away, but it is Atlas who started both halves actually really well and still we aren't able to clear the ball here. And it's because Atlas was doing so well to really retain the ball and obviously that pass, I mean that shot was actually horrible but Atlas was uh, showing that they were the better team so far overall in this game and I really had to just kind of just buckle up and just try to do something about this and then look at this I thought that ball was in the back of the net luckily for us it wasn't kept this game still nil nil and then we're gonna see 71st minute of the match it's been quite a you know recent affair that we've been you know a, a very midfield battle game and then right there we have an opportunity but our uh, forward isn't able to connect with the head and it was a game that you know kind of was a little bit dry run during the whole midfield it was a game that Atlas controlled very well and you know we had a hard time trying to in the uh excuse me I, I kind of just got caught off by the play right there Renteria 
doing absolutely amazing and just a bit of luck would have put that ball in the back of the net but unfortunately for us that was not the case we're coming down to the last couple uh, seconds of the match Renteria again trying to do that Berba spin unable to do so uh, the ball is then uh, put away for a goal kick and will we have one more opportunity to get something going from here Atlas win the ball from there and then the referee Blows his whistle. That is the end of the game. Our first game ends nil-nil. Not the worst result, but of course not the result we were hoping for, especially in front of our home fans. The goalkeeper right there for Atlas doing absolutely amazing in the first half, being able to keep us away from scoring. And I think, you know, merit goes to Thiago Volpi too because he had an amazing game. So in the end, both teams probably thought they maybe deserved a little bit more. I think Atlas actually, you know, played better. And I think this shows the lack of us unable to bring uh, any really strong uh, players into the team as of yet. But this is what we're going to try to do. We're going to try to change. So we get good news. Anthony Lozano will become our second signing. But not only that, Victor Guzman from Pachuca will be our third signing. And there you guys can see I get a transfer offer for Luis Noriega. I rejected. I'm still hesitant about maybe letting him go. He's been having a pretty good, decent uh, run of form. But um, I did listen to you guys' comments down below in the previous videos. I did see that you guys wanted me to sign Guido Rodriguez. Um, you know, he recently signed from Cholos, but he has a one-year deal. So maybe we'll be able to get him during uh, January. Then Cristian Tello, he's on loan at Fiorentina. So we can't really do much about that. Oscar Trejo, we decided that he was actually going to be a target for the January transfer window. And then we're going to see Andres Felipe Roa. Um, I can't remember who exactly uh, told me about this player, but he looks absolutely Absolutely amazing someone that I really 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 would like to bring into the club and you guys can see I'm offered 3.4 exactly what is worth hopefully uh, the Colombian team can definitely come back and say yes but then we get good news as well we keep a rolling Tom Davies actually uh, Everton accept the debate the 1.8 and we're actually gonna try to incorporate this youngster English player into our team and hopefully we you know, if we bring them, we can mix the likes of youth and experience into a great uh, a great asset for us. And then you guys see, why am I making another bid for uh, Andres Felipe Roa? Now, the reason why is because I, the, I got an email saying that, hey, look, you have a player that is being scouted. I think it was Sampdoria who, who put in a bid for him. So, I, you know what? I, I did the same. And then... I noticed that America then had put another bid for him. So now I was like, okay, so if I really want this player, I'm going to have to really uh, step up my game here and offer a little bit more cash. And then you guys can see Tom Davies doesn't accept the deal right away. He says that he loves living there and that he wants a little bit of extra cash. So we're going to pay a little bit extra cash. And then we're going to submit our third bid for Andres Felipe Roa before the team can actually come back. But before we can actually get a yes or no, we're gonna call. We're gonna play our second game of the season in the Liga MX against a really tough opponent. Uh, if we thought Atlas was tough, this game is de definitely gonna be a little bit more tough. We're gonna have the likes of Monterrey. Uh, we're gonna go to their stadium. So there, you guys saw the lineup in the back. Um, you know, I, I'm bringing in the likes of Victor Guzman and uh, Ant and Lozano. Uh, you know, I'm bringing in them to see how they can incorporate into this new team and if they fit with a very good, um, if, if they can just do a very good job. There you guys see our new number nine coming in only at 2.4. I think it's a bargain, especially for what his potential is, and I think he could do a really solid job with us. So. You know, we got, the, we got rid of the likes of Emmanuel Villa, and then we also got the likes of Camilo who left. So now it was more of a, you know, let's see who can come in and take the role of this new number nine. I know we have Sepulveda, but, you know, he's not necessarily the uh, fastest or strongest up, up top. And I think this new, new kid, uh, Lozano, will definitely do a very good job for us. But uh, before we can talk about Lozano, we got to talk about how are we going to contain this Monterrey team. Uh, this Monterrey team doing absolutely amazing um, in real life. And then you can see right there, right away, I think it isn't, if it isn't for my defender who actually gets a touch on it, it uh, actually would end up in the back of the net. So uh, fortunate for us right here, then we're going to have Pajaro Benitez 
cut inside, do a little one-two step over. Then he's going to give it off to Bornstein. Bornstein's going to play it off to Guzman, who's then going to give it off to Lozano. And he takes his first shot, but he uh, finds someone. And, you know, we get a uh, corner kick out of this. And then, you know, we weren't really able to increase our chances off of that. But we're going to come here, 37th minute of the match. Not a lot happened. And uh, Monterrey actually had a very good opportunity to get themselves a header in and you know like they didn't really appreciate it as much and you know it was a game that was very fought out in the midfield um i had a very hard time holding the ball due to the fact that monterey were just you know very 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 good at doing what they do in the midfield i think the likes of ortiz actually was their key player because he was actually controlling everything so you know first half ends and it's a nil nil result a result that in at the moment i would have definitely taken and then you guys see right here Pabon running in the 67th sixty second minute of the match just absolutely bursting with speed getting through my defense and Thiago would be coming up pretty big and then they get a corner and again we were able to clear our lines and luckily for us that was not one nail for Monterrey but we're gonna move on here 65th minute of the match and we're gonna try to create something out of nothing here Pajaro Benitez then gonna give it away and we just absolutely weren't able to do so then we have Victor Guzman who's gonna come in get the shot I mean uh, the triple pass across from goal and Lozano who had an absolutely amazing opportunity to put us in front just kind of scuffs it wide. And then in the 78th minute of the match, Arrenteria does ever so well after I brought him in to give it to Lozano. And the main man himself, our new number nine, gets himself on the score sheet for us. He puts us 1-0 against Querétaro. I mean, excuse me, we are Querétaro. Um, against Monterrey, a very good opposition. And, you know, very good to tuck it away. It was very hard for him to miss from there. And, you know, happy with the new signing. Happy that he gets his goal. And I think that will be the beginning of many, many more to come. Especially if he can continue to play the way he's been doing so. But uh, we were starting to leak a little bit at the back on our defensive side. My defense, my defending um, skills just absolutely weren't the best. And, you know, we hung up as much as we could. And, you know, we pushed this Monterrey team to its limits. And, you know, you see right here towards the 90th minute. We're trying to hold on for dear life. Cardona gets the ball. He's running out wide. And then he's going to give it off to Cristaldo, who just slides and isn't able to really get the ball going. But we clear our lines, and the referee says that will do it for the end of the match. We do end up getting all three points away at Monterrey. It's absolutely amazing. I was actually very, very happy with the team. And not only that, because... Another bit of great news happened. We were able to hijack the deal away from Sampdoria and America. And you know what? We're this close. I mean, if you guys can see, this close to signing Andres Felipe Roa. Um, you know, they accept our offer, Deportivo Cali. And then, you know, then you see Tom Davies actually accepts also as well. But seeing as how financially we're not doing so hot, I think... What I'm going to do is I'm going to wait to see if Felipe Roa accepts. And he actually doesn't accept right away. He actually says he wants a little bit more cash because he loves living in his uh, current condition. So, you know, I, I understand that. And he actually, he's, his wages is not that much compared to the likes of um, uh, Davies. So we're going to hold on to that and we're going to see by the end of the video if he accepts. But before that, we're going to play our third and final match. And it is going to be against Tigres. And we are at our home stadium again. So, second time we play a team from Monterrey in a row. So, it's, uh, you know, the league was not very nice to us. So, we actually started playing off against two two really tough opponents. In the likes of Monterrey and Tigres, who will definitely be fighting for the title. And, you know, I think if we were able to hijack three points away from Monterrey in their own stadium, who's to say we can't do the same thing in our stadium but against Tigres. So, uh, right away in the fifth, sixth minute of the match, we actually uh, try to get things going off on the wing with Candelo. He crosses the ball, but no one's able to really connect with it. Then we're going to get uh, an opportunity here for Tigres. After a corner kick, they go uh, pretty deep in with um, that shot right there that gets absolutely no power. And Thiago Volpi is able to control. But Tigres were starting to announce himself in this game. Then in the 20th minute, Renteria is going to be pushing out in the wings. And then look at this opportunity. Golden opportunity for Luis Noriega to just put the ball in the back of the net. And again, he isn't able to do so. He scuffs it wide. And it's just, it's just it could have been the opportunity, right? 
But then that's pretty much it. The first half they didn't really have much highlights. It was just the whole uh, just touching back and forth, whether it was from me or it was from Tigres. It was a very, very possession-like game, which, uh, you know, it's a little bit boring to show, so if there isn't any highlights to it. But uh, we're going to move on right away from the kickoff. It's 48th minute of the match. Lozano's going to push his way. He has a burst of speed that's amazing. He's strong. He's physical. And he's just not really able to connect with that ball right there. But when he can... Trust me, he's a very, very good player to have. And then Guzman, who I actually, I absolutely adore this guy. He's absolutely running all over the pitch and just commanding the midfield. And then you see him square the ball to Lozano, who he connects with very good. But it is Guzman who then later ends up, um, you know, picking up this, uh, um, just kind of picking up everything and making sure Tigres don't concede. And then we're going to get an opportunity right after that. Renteria kind of just toe pokes it. He's almost finding the back of the net if it wasn't for the likes of the defender. And then look at this great header who then Guzman parries away. And the Argentinian goalkeeper was absolutely having an amazing game. So we knew it was going to be a tougher position. And especially when their goalkeeper is in the form that he is. It was then going to be even tougher. 75th minute of the match now. Not much really going for us. Renteria then doing his famous Berber spin. And then he's going to pass it wide to Lozano. And then who's going to give it to Jimenez? Renteria then shoots. Then Renteria gives it away to Jimenez. Jimenez then going to give it pass back to Lozano. Or is he? Yes, to Lozano. Lozano is then going to find Renteria who's going to take the shot. But it was a very, uh, you know... Here you take it, no, here you take it, and no one really in the end said, here, I'll finish it for us, and then Lozano with an absolutely amazing opportunity, and it's again Noel Guzman, uh, Grant, I did just shoot it to his body, but we should have done better there, and then in the last dying embers of the match, 90th minute, uh, Tigres win it back, can they get something going? They can't actually. The game ends up being a nil-nil result. Um, that's two games now that we're unable to really win. But I think this game actually felt more uh, like a victory than anything because you know the likes of Tigres with the players that they have. Uh, you know it was uh, it was a pretty decent result, and I'm actually happy with it. So and there you guys can see um, Santos going in for Noriega. I say you know what if you want him, you gotta give me an X amount of cash. So we'll see if they come back and say yes, but. Even better news, Andres Felipe Roa accepts the offer and he is coming to Querétaro now. So we hijacked the deal from all those other clubs. And then Luis Noriega, you know, they offer me a little bit more than it was what he's worth. So you know what? I say, I'll take it. Luis Noriega, you know, I had very some doubts. He had some good games. Other games, he wasn't so good. And I thought I was pretty much done with all my signings. But then I thought I need a little bit more of a Mexican base. We have enough foreign players so now i'm going to try to bring in the likes of daniel alves who has an absolutely amazing potential and is an absolutely amazing player so in the meantime while you guys see me uh structure the 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 type of uh, team i'm going to be using so far uh with adding new addition of roa there um if we can get alvarez then that's gonna be great and you know we're giving the likes of sepulveda so hopefully atlas uh say yes to the straight swap so in the end um you know we play our first three games. We're unbeaten so far. Yeah, I know it's just only three games. It's very early in the season. But I think if we can continue to do so, then we're going to be looking at an absolutely great season so far. There you guys can see we have, um, I think it's eight uh, eight actual foreign players. And I'm trying to keep this as, as uh, realistically as possible. I know that in the new season, the Liga MX has a nine, nine for nine rule. That means... Uh, nine Mexican players need to be in your roster for the game day squad and nine players that are foreign uh, players can be in the squad as well, making a total of 18. So in the end, we have nine with Pajaro Benitez on the bench and the rest are Mexican players. And we're just going to try to continue that and hopefully we can grow eventually. But um, I think this, the team is definitely starting to settle in more. So I'm very happy to do so. But yeah, guys, we're coming up to the end of the video. If you guys did enjoy this, please hit that like button. Subscribe if you guys happen to find this and you're new to the channel. I got a lot more content coming your way. And let me know in the videos down below. We're still not done with the transfer window. I have very little limit, limited cash. But if you guys do want me to sign a player, let me know in the comments down below, preferably Mexican. But until next time, guys, take care.